here we are on the coastline of North Dublin in the town of or fishing village of Loch Shinny and we're between Russian skerries and what we're going to look at is the cliff section behind us and we're going to look at some folded carboniferous rocks. These are some limestones that are about 330 million years old and we're going to look at some of the folding patterns in these rocks. Okay so here we are now at the section where the folds are, are best developed. And behind me you'll see that there's a, a series of folds and there's two different types, synclines and anticlines. A syncline is a, a type, of, type of fold where the geometry is something like this, a V shape. And then also we have a series of anticlines in an A shape on the cliff, on the cliff section behind us. So what we've done now is we've zoomed in a bit on the folds, we've moved in closer to the cliff section, and now we're going to trace out one or two of the folded limestone layers that make up the, the folded cliff section. So most of the folds in this particular coastal section are made up of folded layers of limestone standing on here at the moment. So this is a, is a bed of limestone between about half a meter and a meter thick. And if you follow my arm up, it goes into an anticline like so. And then it then goes into a syncline. And in this section here, the beds are the right way up, and here they've been slightly inverted. They're on, their, they're on their edge, but they've actually been turned over slightly. So many of the, the pale grey layers here, these are the limestones, and in between there's some thin, black, organic-rich rocks, which are known as shales. And it's these two different rock types that make up the folds. So now I'm in the core of one of these folds. This is an anticline. It's the same anticline that you see up there. Big A shape. And we've got once again this, these folded layers of limestone and shale. And on the limbs of the fold, the limestone is quite, is quite thin. And it tends to thicken up in the fold hinge itself. It's almost thickened due to the folding. And the fold hinge is, is full of veining. These are little veins of calcite. As the rocks were deforming and folding, we we're also getting some cracking and fissuring of the rocks, which was then filled in by, by later fluid. And the main way that these rocks actually deform is by the layers sliding over each other. It's a special folding mechanism known as flexural slip. And a, Maybe a good way of envisaging how this happens is if you took, say, a telephone directory and folded it by squeezing it with your hands. And how the pages slide over each other is a very similar way to imagining how these rocks were, these rocks were folded. The various shale layers, which are quite weak, are where all the sliding is happening and the limestone layers are quite stiff. And this is the folding mechanism that happens quite shallow in the crust when the rocks are quite cold. It's how folding is accommodated in the top few kilometers of the crust. So, behind me, in the top one or two meters of the cliff section, the limestone stop, and on top of that we have about one or two meters of fairly chaotic deposit. And this deposit is, is till. This was deposited about 15, 20,000 years ago during the last ice age when glaciers, which would have covered much of Eastern Ireland and also the Irish Sea, were melting. And it leaves behind a fairly chaotic, poorly sorted deposit of cobbles and, and blocks of rock and glacial sand. And in other parts of the East Irish coast, such as the, 
locality that we're going to see later on today in Kalini, there's very, very good evidence for the direction of the, how the glaciers were traveling in based on looking at the rock types present in the till. What are they doing now, David? Well, I'm just going to try and show you what some of the rocks here look like. Much of the limestones are full of little fragments of fossils. In particular, many of them are made up of fragments of a, a fossil known as a crinoid, a type of sea lily. And it's the stalks and arms of these, of these fossils that get broken up and incorporated into the limestones. And some of them can be quite big, up to several, up to several millimeters. So this is one of the, the limestone beds. It's about maybe 40, 50 centimeters thick. And it's got quite an irregular, irregular base. And it's also full of, of shell material. Here we have some shell fragments. And this once again would have been one of these deposits which would have come from quite close to the, to the shoreline and possibly due to an earthquake or a storm transported lots of shelly debris and fragments down the slope and into this basin. And this, this bed here is graded. It's got coarser material at the bottom and finer material at the top. And this is a characteristic feature of many, of many turbidity currents turbid deposits of sediment which are transported down a slope deep into a basin. Okay, I'm now standing on a, a small anticline going like this and then there's a corresponding syncline just there. And I'm actually standing on the fold hinge. And anticlines are A-shape. And it's the hinge of the anticline is actually not horizontal. It's plunging into the ground like so. Let me walk down the fold plunge so you can see this. So many of the folds in Loch Shinny, their hinges aren't perfectly horizontal. Sometimes they plunge in this direction. And many of the folds also plunge the opposite way. So these folds are what geologists would refer to as non-cylindrical. The Vriskan mountain building event which folded these rocks 300 million years ago also produced some veins systems in these rocks and these are made up of the of the mineral calcite. So as the rocks were deforming they were also fracturing and fluids rich in calcium carbonate exploited the cracks and deposited the mineral calcite in vein systems. And some of the vein systems in Loch Shinny are really spectacularly developed. And we have a whole series of, of cracks lined up like this. And these tensional cracks can let us work out the way that the vein system opened up. So here we are looking at one of these vein systems. And this vein system opened up in this fashion here. My right hand is moving to the right and my left hand is, is moving to the left. And geologists call this a dextral sense of movement, where, where essentially the opposite block is always moving to the right. And as this vein system opened up in this fashion, it generated these cracks, these tensional cracks in the rock which filled in with the mineral calcite. As the, as the vein system progressively opened up in this fashion. And some of the veins themselves are rotated into these S shapes. 